What's up mob crew? I'm Chris and today's video is a small breakdown of Bridge Guy and the time frame he had with Abby and Libby. Also I know there's been a lot of questions about who Flannel Shirt Guy is so I go over that and much more in today's video. Also today's missing person case is Erin Teresa Lawrence. She was last seen in Mina, Arkansas. She will be featured at the end of my video so please stay until the end for that. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the channel everybody where we cover murder mystery to the paranormal. This is a video of Dan McCain who is a historian of sorts. He is the brother to Dave McCain who is supposedly flannel shirt guy. Here is the video of Dan. Now, and that includes part of Ohio. It includes all the way to Toledo. Interesting though in Ohio if you're a resident of Ohio you would say well, that's the Miami Erie Canal. Seven years after it was created and had been originally called the Wabash and Erie Canal, then people of Ohio didn't even want to help Indiana that much. Well, they renamed it the Miami Erie Canal. <laughs> and what is the group that you oversee now? Well, the Wabash and Erie Canal Association that did start in 1971 and it puts it back a generation before me. So my mother was very involved in the beginning of the Canal Association. It was the first president, and they saw the opportunity to do something with our historic resource that was here wasting away, and yet the majority of the community of Delphi and many other canal towns along the Wabash and Erie Canal didn't like the canal. So you're before I say anything else, let me be clear, neither brother is considered a person of interest and both brothers were around their 70s when the tragedy happened. With that said, Dave McCain claims that he would often hike the 500 trails almost daily. He supposedly saw Bridge Guy on February 13th, 2017, and he is the one who gave a description which led to the second sketch of the bridge guy, the younger sketch. But there is also rumors that he actually never saw bridge guy, so this part of the investigation has always been confusing. And even Derek, the father of Liberty German, has even said that he wasn't sure who flannel shirt guy was. So another guy I found is Zachary Vermillion. He was arrested in Peru, Indiana and was charged with felony 4 and felony 5 for having over 2,500 photos of young girls. He also uploaded a certain file on February 14, 2017, just a day after the tragedy. He also used to live in Kokomo, Indiana, which is real close to Delphi. I know that ISP doesn't really want us to do side by sides with the sketches but I couldn't help notice that the thin beard and reddish brown hair he has and how the nose and eyes seem to match up a little bit. So moving on to the time frame of the actual tragedy we know that Liberty uploaded two photos one with just the bridge in the picture and one with Abby walking along the bridge. This was sent at 2.07 p.m. So from what ISP have stated, they believe the suspect made it back to his vehicle that was parked past the CPS building at approximately 5 p.m. So my theory would put the time frame of the crime taking place at approximately 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. So about a two hour window from the time he gets Abby and Libby going down the hill to the time he is leaving the scene of the crime. Although two hours may seem like a long time, considering that there was little evidence left behind and the fact that this has been unsolved for so long would suggest that little to no DNA was left behind from the suspect. I think this clearly suggests that the killer knew and frequent this location before and could be very intelligent. I doubt this would have been his first time crossing that bridge as it is very intimidating and he seemed to have navigated it pretty quickly. Since the bodies were discovered on the other side of the creek, it would suggest that either the girls tried to escape and it forced them across the creek, 
or more likely he made them cross the creek and attempt to throw off their scent and or conceal their tracks. The ISP did put out this statement regarding the Keegan Klein case. It's basically saying that they have received over 500 tips since they released this account's name and that they have more pieces to the puzzle that they would love to share with us hopefully one day. So the day of Klein's pretrial is set for December 16th at 8.15 via Zoom meeting. So maybe we will learn a little bit more about how all this is connected. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Also, please smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. Please hit that bell and turn on notifications as I upload almost daily. I will be going live here soon once I get my studio set up. Please consider supporting my channel by becoming a member or by donating to one of the links in the description. Shout out to my two new members, Anna Paddock and Christine Thiemann. Thank you so much for joining the mob crew. Today's missing person is a special request from YouTuber All American Dream Chaser. She is Erin Teresa Lawrence. She went missing in Mena, Arkansas, but could be in Oklahoma. And she goes by Pepper and could be using different last names. Please take a close look. Please take care of yourself and be sure to tell someone you love them and I love you all. Thank you.